Have you ever noticed that in the media, men and women tend to be represent- Well, uh, hang on, sorry. Let's try that again. Have you ever noticed that in the media, men and women te- Nope, nope, can't use that one. Just try again. Have you ever noticed that in- Oh, definitely not that one. Have you ever no- Have you ever- No. Uh, no. Have you ever noticed that in the media, men tend to be represented as strong, dominant, and powerful, and women tend to be passive and secondary? Well, Van Zunen definitely noticed, and it's her work on patriarchy and feminism that we'll be looking at today. So, Lisbeth Van Zunen is a feminist thinker who built on Laura Mulvey's idea of the male gaze, which we're going to be talking about a lot today. So, if you're not familiar with it, I've made a video about it which you can watch here, but here's the short version. The male gaze refers to the way the media represents the world almost entirely from the male perspective. We see this in the way male characters look at women, the way the lens looks at women like a straight man, and how the audience looks at women. In each case, we are positioned to view the world from a man's perspective. So what does Van Zunen add to the mix? Well, she pointed out that representations of men and women actually vary depending on time and culture, which makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, compare these representations of gender from Japan and Britain. Sweetheart, don't look at me like that. It's going to be amazing. Obviously, culture is going to have a massive impact on gender. So what Van Zunen was primarily interested in is how Western representations of women and men have led to patriarchy, which is basically a society where men are in charge and dominant and women are secondary. Now, can you take the long way up? I am really enjoying the view here. So the argument's nice and simple. The media cultivates patriarchy. Let's take a look at the evidence. Firstly, let's talk about appearance. Whenever we see men or women in film, they usually tend to be dressed or undressed in a way that allows them to be sexualized. For women especially, this ranges from the explicit to the less explicit but so super tight as might as well not be there. Men, on the other hand, are usually dressed in a way that connotes power and authority and way less fitted or showing less flesh than women. Other times, men also wear very little, but these representations tend to highlight their physical strength and power, as we see in literally every shot in 300. This is where we fight! This is where they die! And the shield boys! Even the body language of men and women is different. Here, women clearly being more erotic, and men being more powerful, even though they're both wearing very little. If we take this a step further, we very rarely see men fully nude in the media. Move it! You son of an exhibitionist! This is something that Van Zunen argues robs someone of their power. Now what's interesting is, we actually see comparatively far more women fully nude, but more importantly, gazed at by a man. Not only are they having their power stripped away from them, but the man is in charge and has all the power. This, in the grander scheme, represents the power imbalance between men and women. Okay, next piece of evidence. Let's take a look at how men and women gaze back at the camera in the media. Women seem to welcome the male gaze through direct address, or with invitational gestures that seem almost flirtatious. Men almost never do this. They may smirk, nod, even blue steel, but rarely pout, wink, or kiss. In doing so, female characters are modeling sexual invitation, which almost allows the male gaze. What's interesting is men very rarely break the fourth wall at all. Instead, their gaze is usually off into the distance, or they will direct their gaze at their muscles, their physique. Again, this makes male nudity more about physicality and less about sexuality. Next up, there's the roles that men and women play in the media, usually with men in important, powerful positions and women in secondary, maternal or domestic roles. So for example, we have Bond, who kicks ass, saves the world, and is helped by the girl who also acts as prize at the end of the film. What about the reality TV show The Bachelor, where a successful businessman Bring on the women! literally has women lining up to marry him? In TV game shows, men host and women, usually of a certain shape and size, act as assistant. Magicians do this too. Come to think about it, it's absolutely everywhere. In each of these cases, men are leaders appraised for their strength, intelligence, wealth, whereas women as secondary characters are praised for their looks. So the question is then, do these gender-specific looks and body language and roles cultivate patriarchy in society? Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
Now let's take a look at putting all of these things back together with a really great case study. Here's an advert for His and Hers Fragrances by Paco Rabanne, and if we take a look closely, we should see all of these elements at play. So first we see the man, because he's most important. Of course he's introduced first, he's the main character. He's topless, yes, but his tattooed muscular physique and his mode of transport, a heavy loud motorbike with bullhorns on the front, is littered with symbols for power and strength. The woman, on the other hand, is wearing a sparkly dress, riding a horse, because, you know, girls love horses and stuff. She jumps off onto the back of the man's bike and hangs onto him. He's superior and in control and dominant. In their Mad Max style fight, she attacks with a kiss and he does whatever this is. Then she looks straight at the camera, almost flirting with the audience, while he looks off into the distance, signifying his ambition and clarity of path. Then we have the icing on the cake, the final shot, where he walks forward holding the trophy with her by his side. I think it's pretty clear that if we put this all together, we have a representation of gender here where men are superior, in charge, and dominant. That's what we call patriarchy. So thank you very much for watching this video. As always, guys, I hope you found it useful. If you're looking for where to go next, the obvious place would be to check out male and female gaze, both of which I've made videos on, which you can check out here. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.